Good afternoon. We are here for segment number three and something that Michael and I always love talking about, deals. Yeah. Deals. Who doesn't like love deals. a deal? I love deals. Love deals. So Mike, uh, as you know, been a little bit of a tear, yes. a little bit of a spend recently. Um, I've burned almost for the entire million dollars. Oh, yes. Yep. But we're big now. We're big. So uh, it was, it's been a busy 90 days since the refis got completed. It allowed us to evaluate every property like we usually do, but also what we've seen is with some inefficiencies in the market, what we have seen is a number of brokers have been getting deals that they quite frankly shouldn't be getting because mm, they don't have experience and right. all of that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Lacking experience, lacking volume. Oh, Hey, I sold 12 houses last year. Great. Were any of them two, two units? No. Yeah. Uh -uh. Here's an apartment building. Sell that. Well, that's a little different. Yeah. Right. And so largely what we've seen is their numbers have been wrong. And so what's really yeah. interesting is, is that I had the luxury of, and what we wanted to talk about in this video was specifically deals and offers and how, how I won two deals where I wasn't even the most, I wasn't even the highest and best. Yeah. I want to start though, just because, because I know where yeah. we're going here is I Please. want to remember, I want people to realize what you did ahead of time. Uh, I don't know. I guess it was probably 10 weeks ago. Now you started a process that wasn't fun. Yes. Where basically you took a bunch of assets that were, that had low LTVs. You went back to the bank, you laddered up, you got all this cash. You essentially borrowed a bunch of money around 4%. Yes. Sitting in an account being de inflated away. It was <laughs> going too crazy. It was going you're crazy. <laughs> to that. And then, oh, by the way, you borrowed it for, and your lowest return is 20 something. Yes. I would do that deal every freaking day. Every Borrow day. it for earn 20. The only question is how much money can I get, right? That's yes. definitely the only thing. So I, I just wanted to set that up because you did the legwork. You did the opportunity. Yes. You were willing to sit on the cash for a while. Yes. You just happened to find some inefficiencies, maybe some motivated sellers because yes. the real estate slowdown is real. It is. Um, it's winter in your area. It's always a little bit less busy. But yeah, it's um, it's fun to see people prepare and then actually execute. So congratulations. I appreciate that. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, everything, it's the opportunities there, right? We get the refi question a lot, the cash out refi question a lot. Why would this, you do that? Are you kidding me? Bob, <laughs> Dave Ramsey says, don't do it. You're panic debt. Dave Ramsey says that is bad. Because I can't wait until I'm 65 to spend my retirement. Yeah, I can't. Exactly. I want to live retirement now. I want and to be so, free. yeah. So when we look at these deals, what was really interesting about them is, to your point, so May is when I started that refi process, and it wasn't August, fun. Yeah, no, it was horrible. Yeah, it Meaning was paperwork horrible. and yeah. oh, paperwork and and you know, it was sixty days of prep yeah. to even then get the appraiser out, and then it was a month because I asked for one appraiser that way I could spend the day with that appraiser. Right. And I said, obviously, I couldn't pick who the appraiser was, but I could pick that I wanted it all done in one day. Yes. So that we could pick. Yeah, yeah. And so based on that, they put the order together. They send it out to the market. They get a bunch of these bids. That's how this happens. Then mm -hmm. basically, it costs me about $5,000. And in, a day. Yeah, 5000 bucks in a day. And then all the notification of tenants and, oh, my word. So we do all that stuff in August. And then finally the paperwork comes around and finally we close end of August, beginning of September. So we get our seven figures out. We have about a million dollars or so, a little over a million dollars that we then have to play with. And the plan is always like we've talked about is to reinvest, but the criteria has changed. We're not doing good deals anymore. Only great deals. We're only doing great deals. And a great deal for me in my market is anything north of 16%. And the fact that you know that is step one, right? I tell, right. I, I tell people all the time, what I'm trying to teach you to, to do in my course is to understand average. Why average? Because it's the easiest thing to understand. The MLS is full of average. If you can know average and if average is eight, a good is 12 and a great 16. And if an average is two, maybe a good is four and a great six. Whatever, every market is different. But gosh darn it, go figure out average because once you know that you have all the power. 100%. The other thing is too, making sure that you understand, having talked to your banker, what your rate's going to be, what the down payment's going to be, be pre-qualified. 
understand every part of the game. I know what the rents are in my area. I know what those properties in that refi in September, I know what they already were refied for. I know the value of them. I know how to then use that as somewhat of a comp for the stuff that I'm buying. So I have a huge advantage over every other buyer going to look at those properties. Yep. But one thing about this is that speed is absolutely critical. These were MLS deals. They hit the market late at night, the previous night. And the very next day we were in there asking, okay, we know you have an open house on Saturday. It's Tuesday. Can we see it now? What's the worst they can say? No. Now here's the thing with having an agent that you have a good relationship with that also is well thought of in the market. He can get you in there. She yeah. can get you in there. Absolutely. They can get you in there before that open house. Mm -hmm. Both of these deals, one, actually, excuse me. One of these deals we closed before the open house. There you go. They listed it for 485, a house that I have, Mike, 10 houses down, mm -hmm. just appraised with the same exact footprint for 560. <laughs> okay. They missed. Yeah. They, they missed. missed. Yeah. They missed. They put it up too cheap. Yep. Okay. So nice. I go in there and admittedly, I'm like, you know what? Let's just see if we can get it done at 507. That was the number I picked. I was like, because that number still kept me below $3,000 a month. Mm. Their rents prior to, now the building, even get this, Mike, the building is vacant. Wow, you get to put tenants in. I get to put tenants in. And I have a list of tenants that want to go in. I bet. They base the number on the fact that of what they were getting for rents previously. Oh, they didn't know rents had done. Rents had changed a little bit in your area? A little bit. A little, little bit. bit. So my rents on this unit are $2,750 a side. Oh, they were, they were carrying $2,000. Oh, 30%, 35%. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Big. So big. we're in at 507. I know that my house, 10 houses up, same exact footprint, except this one's even better. My house has a shared driveway. This has two separate driveways and two separate two-car garages. Oh, that I believe I can ADU and add a layer on top and actually add a studio on top of each of those garages. <sighs> this deal's awesome. 507, all in, I'm going to be under 3,000 a month with payment, insurance, and taxes. My deposit's gonna be 20%, so I'm gonna be about $100,000 in deposit. Okay. And we're gonna be at, so under 29, I think 2907 is what the number is. And okay. our- Monthly rents are fifty five hundred. Jesus. Okay. And what, so, what, what kind of? I got just one other question. Ahead, this please. is awesome. So, what kind of make ready? So it's vacant. Are you going to be spending any money, kind of cleaning? And I mean, are we talking five grand just to clean and dust, or are we talking twenty grand bathrooms? What do we do? No, no. The kitchens and bathrooms are done. She actually oh. added bathrooms under the stairs. Oh my. Which goodness. is a big thing in New England. So now it's not a four one. It's a four two, which makes nice. it extremely desirable. Oh yeah. Um, and it's there, these are the these are the old classic Victorian duplexes that are three thousand square feet, so they're fifteen hundred a side. So they're big, big huge, yeah. single family, you know, footprint type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, make ready is going to be less than five k, just because we'll go through and. So you really and, just down payment closing costs. Yeah, just, yeah, that's awesome. All right, so yeah, yeah you're so you put a hundred in, you're going to make let's call it two a month. Twenty, two, yeah, a little more than that. Yeah, even numbers. water and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, we're yeah. still talking probably 23. Okay, so you so again, just simple math: 100k down, two a month times 12 is 24. So again, very simple yield calculations: 24 percent. Correct. Oh, dude, and you borrowed the money at four to do this? Yes. Damn. Terrible. Terrible. Dave and, Ramsey would be upset. Yeah, and MLS deal. Yeah. But we got the offer in, and I could offer more. Yeah. Because I knew what the property was worth and I knew what the rents could be. There you go. No, no, the market. Yeah. The I work. haven't even closed. I made one phone call to one of my corporate renters and said, Hey, got a duplex, big duplex, four, two, four, two on each side, private driveway, garage where they can store some tools. Any interest in signing on for that? And he's like, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> it's like, sounds good. I was like, it's going to be the same price as the one over here, but it's a it's, I said, it's actually going to be a little bit more because it's just that much better of a location. So they're mm -hmm. like, yeah, we'll take it. So it's already rented. Yeah, not even closed, already rented. Not even closed, already rented. 
I love it when that happens. MLS deal, people. MLS deal. Do so, the work. Do the work. To make sure that people don't think it's a fluke, there was another deal also <laughs> in the in the hopper. <laughs> Oh, this this deal awesome. pops on the market on Tuesday. They say we're doing an open house on Saturday. This building is huge. It is a duplex, but it is a 3,600 square foot duplex. So it's 1,800 square feet a side. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's a 5-2 on each oh, side. Jesus. Five, two. So these are the old Victorians that they do here where they're split down the middle and they're five bedrooms, two baths. So updated kitchen, one side completely renovated. Mm. The other side, they're getting 2000 bucks a month rent. So what do they do? They go, you know what? 2000 times two. <laughs> so, this is why I love real estate. It's inefficient. And if you know what you're doing, you can crush it. You can create good deals, even when they're listed on the MLS. That is comical. 495, we went in at, or excuse me, four, yeah, four, 485. Our 490 was this one. It was, a little, it was only a few thousand bucks more expensive. That's the other thing too. People that went to this one that lost out on this one, they were after this one and I got both. And I wasn't even the top number. So what did I do to give myself the best position to win? I had a letter ready from my bank saying that I had enough funds that I could purchase this property and they would approve the loan, pre-approval. Yep. I, I sent them a bank statement showing them that I had six figures Mm -hmm. To be able to afford the down payment without. I mean, you issue. really had the money. You weren't just borrowing somebody else's money. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So I had, the, and I had the money ready. It wasn't in another account. It was, I had the money in my account with my name on it ready. Yep. So the money was there ready, even though inflation was going to burn me and eat at me at 6% a year. Yeah. I was, was still willing to have it sitting there and burning yeah. at me. Me too. And then the third thing was, is I, we asked them the question, like we always do guys, what are the three most important things to you? Mm -hmm. What was really funny is on this deal, they came back and they said, number one is price. Number two is we want the tenant on the other side to be able to stay for their lease. Okay. Yeah, good. And the, and the, and the third thing was, um, the third thing was, is uh, inspections. If you do inspections and you bail out because of inspections, we want half your deposit. Okay. Well, Knowing what I know, doing what I do, we were able to walk it. Instead of saying no to inspections, we said yes, inspections, but just information purposes. There you go. That's fine. If there's yeah. something major that's a $50,000 problem, I don't mind losing $5,000 to walk. Yeah. At that point, it's a fairly good idea. Yeah. But what was amazing about it is they had the open house. Mike, Saturday, they had the open house. Sunday, I had my broker call. He said, so what do you think? Because we pulled our offer off the table because we said, if you want to do the open house, we're pulling our offer off the table. Mm -hmm. Had the conversation. They got nine offers. Okay. Nine offers. They said back to us because it was one of the top 10 brokers in, the, in, in this company. It was my broker. They actually knew of each other. They'd worked together on deals before. And they just basically said, okay, what's it going to take to get this done? They said, we like everything that you sent us. We believe that you guys can close. We feel the most comfortable with this offer. Here's the one thing that we need. We just need you. We, we need you guys to, to work on the number. This number. Yeah. Okay. We worked on the number. We came up, we were at 525. Done deal. Nice. 3,600 square feet, 5252 five, aside. My rent's going to be 3,000 bucks a month. Five, 10 bedrooms. Damn. Okay. There you go. 3,000, 3,000 aside a month, do the work. six grand. So again, don't tell me that there are no deals in your area. I guarantee you will find deals. If you've done the work, you know, what average is, you know, what good is, you'll know what great is. Yeah. I guarantee there are some great deals because in my market, you know what the inventory for multifamily, i.e. two to four multis, do you know what the inventory for that is in the three markets I watch? I don't know. Seven. <laughs> I was, gonna guess, seven. I was gonna guess 17, seven. It's seven. And usually we're running at 45. Right. So the key here again is that we're way below inventory norms. Mm -hmm. They got nine offers from nine other investors, but people get stuck on, well, I'm not paying that much over ass. I'm mm -hmm. not, I'm not gonna pay that much over ass. Why? Yeah. Or the or the Math. inspection issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Math. Yeah. Yeah. Have a clean deal. Don't have an unsafe deal, but have a clean deal that you can at least be able to justify and say, guys, look at the numbers, look at the facts. My bank was like, wow, you're paying uh, 35 over ask. Yep, I am. 
Yep. They're like, you think you need to get there? I said, do the math. Yeah. My mortgage payment with them is going to be $2,974. One side is going to cover my mortgage. Which is taxes side, and insurance in your area yep, as well. Taxes, yeah. insurance, and everything. Yep. So again, so Mike, if you had to give people advice based on the story that was just told, if you had to give people advice, what would it be based on what I was just told you I was able to do in my market? Well, there's a couple of things. First and foremost, it all starts with doing the work. Focus and daily discipline. Don't stop. I know the last year has been hard. No inventory. Allah. I don't care. I doesn't matter. Yes. I've been doing it 20 years. So can you. Second, uh, always grow your network. Always keep moving forward. And then third, I don't want to hear there's no deals on the MLS. They're there. They're hard to find. Yes. They're not screaming deal, deal, <laughs> deal. Yes. There are no blinking lights. You've got to do the work. You got to take your shots. Um, you know, I took three shots yesterday. We'll see what happens. But again, I'm taking my shots. Just figure out what the seller wants. See if you can give it to them. And if yeah. you don't get it, move on. There exactly. will be other deals. There will be. And that's the thing is, you know, the last deal that we closed, I think just three weeks ago, I was like, I don't know. That might be the end of the deals that we're going to see for a while. And then these pop up on MLS and I'm running the numbers. I'm running the numbers. I'm running the numbers. And I was like, then I look at who the agents are. And I was like, they don't really sell multifamily. Like they mispriced. So watch for those inefficiencies in the market. They absolutely are there, but you need to be the one to identify the inefficiencies. That's why you have to do the work. Every day. So Mike, tell everybody how they can find you, my friend. Go to your Google search bar, type in one rental at a time. You should see YouTube, Instagram, website, books, uh, and all kinds of good stuff. Absolutely. As I always say, we spend a ton of time creating great content for you. Subscribe, hit the like button, check Mike out at 8 p. 8 a.m. PST on Saturdays, 11 a.m. EST, where he does an hour long where he answers questions and actually has some of his experts also participating in the chat. Sometimes we're there because we do that as a family thing. And then 1130 a.m. Eastern time, 830 Pacific on Sundays, Lumberjack Landlord, right here, three hour live stream. And then we also record that if for some reason you're not able to make it a priority and attend because after all, retirement early should be a priority. There Mike, you go. I like it. thanks so much for the time, my friend. Have a great rest of your weekend, even though today is already Saturday. It is already Saturday. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Mike.